things I, I, I see with page 136, number 51. Um, if you want to jump in right away, that's a quotient rule problem. If you want to, you could. I don't. I'm not sure this is the best move, but cotangent is cosine over sine. So you could rewrite that as cosine over sine squared. Eh, you're still dealing with the quotient rule, so I don't. It wouldn't be wrong, but I don't think that's going to be helpful. I think I think we back up and say, eh, you know what? Let's just call the top F and the bottom G and go with that. So F prime, ugh, cotangent. Uh, even I don't have cotangent memorized. I have tangent memorized. Tangent is secant squared, right? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And that's like that's honestly how you should memorize it and think about it. That you know, we don't use cotangent very often, so don't memorize cotangent and cosecant. Know how to get from tangent and secant to cotangent and cosecant. Uh, G prime, we use sine and cosine a bunch. Derivative sine is cosine. And then the quotient rule is, uh, I'm going to write it out so I don't mess it up. G F prime minus F G prime over G squared. So sine of X times negative cosecant squared X minus F G prime cotangent x, cosine x, all over sine squared x. And my guess is calc chat in back of the book did all sorts of trig tricks, substitution, crazy stuff, and simplified it to something unrecognizable. But let's free response, safe stop that. Not that terrible where we would simplify them that much, because with you remember, anytime there's a trig function squared, that opens up that whole other realm of possibilities, because sine squared plus cosine squared is one, and so you know there's probably five different ways you could do this. Cosecant is one over sine. Cotangent is cosine over sine cosine all over sine squared. Like, I don't know what they're going to do next for this. Why is the first sine negative? This one? Yes. So that, I really just wrote it in a different order. That came from this. It's not the sine that was negative. It was the cosecant squared that was negative. Okay. I just put it in front. Otherwise, it looks like sine minus cosecant squared. Okay. So, oh, I think I see where this is going because this is going to be, well, never mind. They're going to have a common denominator, sine, when that reduces. And you'd have 1 minus, meh. Yours is not going to be that bad. Like, you got to know some trick stuff, but they're not going to, we're not going to make you go through all that. 59. F of t, 3 a secant squared, pi t minus 1. Directions, find the derivative. Okay, f prime of t, 3 goes along for the ride. Chain rule stuff going on here, so the 2. So power rule, 2 times secant, pi t minus 1. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. So secant, pi t minus 1. Tangent, pi t minus 1. And then derivative of pi t minus 1 would be pi. So I think we've strung it all together. That's a safe stop.
This one's not awful to simplify. 6 pi secant squared times tangent. Yeah, and then is there some trig identity that has secant squared in it? Yes. Do I remember what it is and want to mess with it? No. So this would be good enough. I don't know what calc chat did, but The derivative of secant is secant tangent. Right. Why did you, uh, like I did secant tangent and then the parentheses with the pi t minus one. Why did you do two? Well, you can't just, so you wrote it like this? Yeah. So my question would be, what are you taking the secant of? You have to be taking the secant of something, so you've got to have something there. And it's the secant of pi t minus 1. And that's the trouble of memorizing those things without, you know, the derivative of secant x is secant of x times tangent of x. And we usually just say it, the derivative of secant is secant tangent. And we leave off the stuff, but we've got to remember to put it back in there when we're writing it out. All right, let's switch to the, um, the worksheet.